This is an introduction to the game Battletech. Battletech is still in beta at the time I'm making this video. In fact, the beta has only just started. Uh, it's a turn-based strategy game where you control a squad of four battle mechs, which are basically walking robot tanks. The basic story behind Battletech is that we're in a high-tech Dark Ages type thing. There'd been this great civilization about 250 years earlier which collapsed and people have been fighting over the ashes of it for centuries. They ended up destroying a lot of the advanced tech that they used to have. So most of what they've got is stuff that's been passed on from, I don't know, father to son or whatever for in a lot of cases 200, even 500 years. Uh, they can't build very many new mechs because, of course, all the factories have been destroyed. Okay, there are still a few factories running, but they can barely, main you know, barely enough to maintain the existing mechs and produce maybe almost enough to replace losses. So the idea behind the game is you are a mercenary unit, you take contracts with various different factions and try to earn money so you can buy better mechs, equipment, train your pilots, that sort of thing. In the current stage of the beta all you've got left is single player skirmish. They haven't yet put in the campaign, although apparently that's about done, they're just testing the skirmish phase before releasing the game. There's also a multiplayer on the way, but that's not quite in a state that the developers are happy to show people yet. So I'm just going to go through a basic rundown of the game, play a skirmish mission, and see what happens. There's not the mech lab to configure the mechs yet, but that'll be there eventually as well. My computer is on the low end of the uh, Welcome, on the low end of the minimum spec requirement. Uh, my graphics card is in fact the lowest spec graphics card this will work with, but Okay, so when you go for a skirmish match, you've got your team, the opponent's team, which in this case of course is a computer controlled opponent. Each side controls a lance, that is four mechs. You can choose the budget. So I'll go for top budget so we can bring in a few heavy and assault mechs. Just for the fun of it, I'm bringing an Atlas, biggest mech available in the game at this time and that's put me a bit over budget so I need to scale down a few mechs to give me more room so I'll stick in a light mech I'll go with a Jenna 7D missiles and lasers uh, I'm just trying to max out the command points. So I want something for 5.1. Down here is listed all the weapon systems and other equipment for mech carries. I 
go for Centurion A Eva. Looks like an okay mech. And I'm gonna set the enemy team to random so I don't know exactly what I'm up against. So you can choose the conditions, so let's try Twilight and I don't know, I've done this river crossing before, I'll try the Alpine River because I haven't touched on that yet. And this means heat sinks will work a bit better so heat won't be quite so much of an issue, I assume. I could be completely wrong. Commencing deployment. But this is a turn-based strategy game, that means you get a turn, move one of your mechs around, the enemy gets a turn, moves one of theirs around, and keep alternating between the two teams. So this is my first turn, I can choose any mech, so I'll start with Block 8 and I will have him sprint into the middle here and then set his facing so everything is looking forwards. Those two rings indicate weapon ranges, the inner ring is short range weapons, the outer ring is long range I think. This guy doesn't have any long range weapons which is why he just got one ring lit up. So now I've got the Centurion. Again, I'm just moving everything out there to start with. But Jenna moved further because it's a faster mech. Centurion and Hunchback aren't especially fast, and Atlas will be rather slow, as in, it can only move a short distance each turn. Actually not that much worse for the Hunchback, but yeah, anyway. So now I've made my turn, the enemy will make theirs, and then it goes to just one mech at a time. Well, actually the mechs are divided into white class brackets, so light mechs go first, then mediums, then heavies, then assaults. I've got one light for Jenna, two mediums for Hunchback and Centurion, and one assault for Atlas. I haven't got any heavies at this point. So once again I'm going to move blockade well ahead to try to see what's going on. So, Picked up a blip. okay, I can now detect three of the enemy mechs. I can't actually see them, but I know they're there. What's up, Commander? So I'm going to move the Centurion into this cover, oh into his forest which provides cover, makes it harder to hit. Waiting on you, Commander. Hunchback is more of a frontline fighter, so I'm positioning him as close to the front as I can. Commander. The Atlas, as it's set up, has got something for all ranges, but it's more of a close-in fighter. On my way. Oh, this is a ridge, a hill. I can't just climb down it. I should, however, be able to jump because the Jenna should have jump jets. Copy that. Look at that. Someone wants to get dead. Still not got line of sight of the enemy map, but I can now see all four contacts. Because I can't do anything else, I'm going to brace to end return. Bottom 
Oh, I can move Sumo and Witness. So, the Centurion out again. Move along to there. Then face him towards the enemy. Then the same with the Hunchback and the Atlas when I get the turn for the Atlas. I'm currently waiting for the computer control player's turn. Oh no, sorry, I'm waiting to finish my turn. Hitting Brace tells the enemy to take their turn. I am an idiot. Sorry. Ooh, I've now got that Kintaro. I can see it. I hear ya. So, I'll sprint for Hunchback. Looks like that's as far as I can go. And because I'm moving right to the edge of the range, I could barely turn it around to face the correct direction. Aye, aye. Now for the Atlas. So I'll move him a little way towards the cover. Unfortunately, the Kintaro is still out of range of my long range weapons, which is a pity, but never mind. Move order confirmed. So my Jenna has got a 65 to 70 percent chance of actually hitting that Kintaro, but I'm not entirely sure I want to do that because they've got all four max there. There's a fairly good chance they'd be able to kill the Jenna if I attacked. So I'm gonna jump again. And let's see how far I can jump. Can't quite make it into the forest. So I'm going to jump to here and then swing her back around so I can s look at the enemy. So I got a line of sight on that for a second, it looked like a hunchback. So I'm walking the Centurion over to there, and I'm going to see if I can attack this Kintaro. AC10 doesn't look like it's going to hit 55%, but 85 is a reasonable chance, so I'm going to fire. I'm going to make the twist. Yeah, the AC doesn't look to have hit, but the LRM certainly did. Although it didn't do anything. Okay, so the Kintaro has moved. I've now got the Hunchback, and there is no way the Hunch. Or is it? I wonder. Waiting on you, Commander. No, not gonna get into range. Now, the reason I keep manoeuvring the mechs to face the enemy is the mechs have different armor strength on different components. The back especially has got weak armor compared to the front. 
But the arms and legs have got weaker armor than the center torso. The side torsos have weaker armor than the si center. So it's well worth turning it so you've got the front of the mech facing the enemy. So now I've just got the Atlas left to move. So I'll move him to here. Set facing to hit back in time. So I've only got the LRM-20 which has range and it's not actually saying what my hit chance percentage is so that's not a good start but let's see what happens. 65% that's a reasonable chance of a hit. Not as high as I'd like but let's give it a try. It dodged all the missiles that's a shame. Oh no, no, I've got a few hits. I did a bit of damage to its armor. Really negligible damage, but damage nonetheless. Okay, so the Jenna blockade. What I'm going to do with him is sprint to here. Okay, nope. Slightly shorter distance so I can actually turn around and face them. Okay, that'll have to do. Sprinting makes you harder to hit and brace. Well, okay, I didn't have to brace because I used up all my move options. Send me a real opponent. So, what's up, Commander? I've got Sumo Centurion again. to there, set the facing towards the Pintaro, and then see if I can hit it. So, pretty good chance of hitting with everything, so I'm going to Alpha Strike. You see down here, that's for heat bar. It indicates for currently I'm running rather cool. If I fire everything, that takes me to about a third heat, which is quite manageable. Okay, so I've done a bit of damage to that mech now. It's coming out into the water to try to face me head on. It really doesn't like that hunchback. Waiting for order. I could move it up and hit that Kintaro, but that might leave it open for those other mechs. So I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is... Oh no, I can't sprint. Right. So... I'm going to move to here, set the face in towards the Kintaro, Moving to position. and then I'll brace. Awaiting orders. Now I've just got Apex left, so I'll move him Moving out. and then pound on that Kentaro again. Oh no I won't because I've lost line of sight. 
that's a pain. Okay, so I've got nothing I can hit, so I'll brace. this Jenna is I think I'll move to here to try to get line of sight back on that Kintaro and that plan did not succeed Probably gonna put me inside the LRM-10's minimum range, but first of all, weapons are still pretty potent. So let's see what happens. Okay, it's almost stripped off the left torso armor. Sorry, right torso armor. Ooh, Kentaro is getting rather close to the Centurion. It's done a bit of damage. Hopefully I can now get the hunch back into position to rip it to shreds. Yep, I'll move hunchy to there. Face towards the Kentaro, and then do a bit of damage. I almost took off that left torso. I lost the left arm, but the left arm in that Centurion variant doesn't have any weapons, so that's not a big issue. Now for the Atlas. And once again, I'm going to punish that Kintaro. Again, I've only got the LRM-20 in range, but let's see what happens. I can't attack for Kataro, I can't attack for Hunchback. Okay, that's not a great position, obviously. So I've got a brace to end for turn. So we've got an Erby. So that last one looks like it's probably a Panther, but I can't be 100% sure until I get the Sense of contact. Good to go. So here I'm going to use witness to put some hurt on that Kintaro. received. I've got very good hit percentages on those weapons, so let's see. All weapons are go. 
Okay, I took off the torso and I've seriously damaged one of the legs. And I've knocked it over. That's great. And he got straight back up again. Typical. If you hit a mech, what well, I was down, hoping was he'd stay down long enough for me to choose where the weapons hit, hit him with uh, usually you can't. Centurion. But if a mech's fallen down, you can literally pick to stomp on the centre torso or something. Oh dear, the Centurion's been knocked over. Fortunately, I've got him this next move. So I'll tell him to stand up. Then I'll do a melee attack on this Kintaro. You got it. I didn't knock it over and I didn't do that serious damage. I'd probably be better going with the regular weapons. Oh well, never mind. He really doesn't like the Centurion. So I've got Apex's Atlas. I'll move him to there. Moving and once up. again I'm gonna hit back in Tarot to try to knock it out of the fight. Not quite, his sense torso is very badly damaged, but still intact. And to kill a mech, you kill either the head, both legs, or the sense torso. This is set in the 3025 era before things like XL engines, which you legitimately could, and which would allow you to kill a mech by taking out one side. So. I'm going to move to here, turn around, move into position. and then kill this Kintaro. So because it's lying down, I can call a shot, as in pick where I want the shot to hit. Usually the mech's just fire and it's basically a case of where the mech's facing that determines where you can hit, but if the mech's fallen over you can choose a specific target. So I'm going to go for the center torso and fire. Seriously? I'm rather surprised it survived that. Can't take many more hits like that. Yes. Sumo, get up. And step on that Kintaro, please. Yes, he's dead. Okay, so I'm one mech up now. But that hunchback is in a nasty firing position. And he's knocked out for Centurion, so both sides are even. Well, I say even, I've got the Atlas and Jedi compared to their Hunchback, Erby, and pretty sure Panther, so I've got a significant firepower advantage. Can I hit him from where I am? Yes, I can, and I've got 85%. No, no, a 65 with the AC20, 85 for two medium lasers, which is good enough. Hunchback versus Hunchback, let's see what happens. Oh, I almost took off one of its legs, that's an excellent start. So now I've got the Atlas up. So I'm moving him into position to hit that Hunchback. I think I'm still going to be out of range of the... of most of the weapons, but I've still got the... Oh, I've actually... 
I can hit. I can fire everything. The problem is that'll cause me to overheat. So I'll disable the SRM6 and AC20. That makes the heat load far more manageable. Engaging target. Looks like that probably hurt. Oh, it's an urban mech. Looks like the profile isn't accurate. Oh, they've knocked over the hunchback. Oh, dang it, that hurt. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is move the generator around here, try to face that Erby, and I'm going to try to convince him that attacking me was a bad idea. And it's not letting me target him, must be because of that building in the way. They're choosing the building for cover, typical. Okay, so I'll brace myself. I'm close enough that he shouldn't be able to bring the AC-10 to bear. I'm taking a pounding, Commander! Commander? I can't sprint because of a destroyed leg. Back on my feet, Commander. I can move, but not very far. Right, Commander. So I'll get into that slightly better position, then I'll hit oh the no. enemy hunchback. My mech is limping. Hit capacity is fine. So yeah, I'll fire everything. Tell me what to shoot. Missed with the AC-20. This caused a minor hit with one of the lasers, but didn't really do much. So their hunchback is returning fire. Hardly surprising. Armor breach. Internal damage. Fair hunchback is overheated. That's good. That means the Atlas will get a chance at a cold shot. Awaiting orders. Moving out. If you overheat, your mech also gets a chance at going for an aim shot. So I'm gonna go for center torso. I'll disable the. LRM and I'm um, enabling the AC-20 and SRM-6 and firing. Target locked. Well, I didn't kill it, but not far off. It is seriously damaged. So I'm getting behind the urban mech so I can hit its rear armour. And at this close range, I've got a fairly good chance of hitting. So, fire. Yes, killed it instantly. Yikes! That hit hard! 
Good to go. So, witness doesn't need to move. I can attack from where he is, and I'm going to go for an aim shot on the centaur. So, if this hits, he's dead, and it'll be virtually impossible for a single urban mech to kill those three. Yep, that centurion is. Oh, sorry, that hunchback is out of it. I don't know whether that Atlas is going to be able to hit the OB or not, but I'll give it a try. 65% chance of the LRM 20. That's Stop worth a shot. Back. Yeah, that softened him up a bit. Okay, so yeah. it's Blockade's turn in his Jenna, so I'm going to move to engage that urban mech. I'm not sure if I'm close enough. I am definitely close enough, so I'm going to fire. So now it's Witness's turn, I'm going to move him to try to get him out of that Obermax range. He's not going to be able to fire. But if I can not lose a second mech, that'd be good. And I'll brace. Oh, and it's now the Atlas's turn, so... I'm going to move him towards the Erby. And Atlas and Obermech are actually about the same speed, which is a bit amusing, but... a good thing to know. So, the AC-20's got a 65% hit chance, so... let's see what happens. Okay, so his armour on all three torsos is pretty much gone. He is moving towards the Jenna. Which I suppose is the smartest thing it could do. I'm here. Move into position. So I'm going to try to shoot it in the back like I did for the previous one. Roger. Oh, I didn't take note of my heat level. Worst case, that Herbie manages to kill it. Waiting for orders. But that's not likely. On my way. By. So I'm going to move the Atlas up, turn it to I'm face the Erby, and I can't hit it. Of course, the Jenna's shut down, meaning no line of sight for the LRMs. What do you need? So I've restarted, but it hasn't let me do anything else. Okay. 
Good to go. Got it. I'm never going to buy a hunchback bear before this is finished, but that doesn't really matter. Commander? I'm not sure whether that's going to block line of sight or not, but let's see. Looks like I have got an attack line. Oh, and everything is ready. VRM20 has got a rather low chance of hit. That drops heat down to manageable levels. So, hopefully that'll be good by other mech. Great. So I killed them, that wasn't really a fair fight because it doesn't look like they took anywhere near the max number of points. Obviously the AI isn't that well set up yet, but yeah, not a bad game. Except for the fact I had him totally outclassed. That was certainly not intentional. At the end of round, you get this after action report screen, which lists the status of your max at the end of a mission. And yeah, I'll probably do a couple more videos about this over the next few days. If they're popular, I might continue doing them. If they're not, I won't.